This is Victor with Programmatic Academy. This is course two, lesson one, part of uh, creating strategy using programmatic. So for lesson one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a performance strategy using programmatic, or how to use programmatic in order to create a performance strategy. Like I said in the beginning of the uh, of the, the first course, essentially programmatic is uh, a long a long idea. It's a long term strategy. It should not be used for you know one day buys, uh, one day takeovers, things like that. Uh, that's not really how how it works best uh, due to the technology behind it. Uh, so we're going to focus here on building long-term ideas, long-term strategies, okay? It also should not be a standalone tactic. Um, there's a lot of things that, that can help and nurture programmatic and work alongside programmatic within digital. But the first thing we have to know are the objectives. You know, what am I seeking to gain from a programmatic campaign? Is it sales, awareness, reach, engagement, etc.? Uh, this is key, and as we'll go into, we'll see you know a brief and what um, are some of the just most basic things that a brief uh, requires. Uh, KPIs, you know, KPIs are you would think that most people would would know what they wanted as far as ROI, CPA. Uh, what is KPI essentially is key performance indicator. How are we measuring success? for this campaign, okay? Um, and that's what's gonna tell you, you know, what what's gonna, you know, is my money working for me? Whether you're a brand or you're an agency and then and using, you know, working for, for the client. Uh, commitment, okay, if you, if, if whoever's running this programmatic campaign doesn't have, uh, isn't committed to running for at least three months Okay, uh, at a minimum of I would say, because they always ask, well, three months, but can I do five dollars a day? No, uh, at a minimum of you know ten thousand impressions per day, in order to test the viability of programmatic, uh, then you know it's best that you probably don't do it. It, it does. It requires commitment. It requires uh, you know, like I said, a long-term strategy. Um, I would say if you can get a six month commitment, it would be best. Uh, I've had campaigns in my experience that uh, were extremely difficult to reach, you know, the expected ROI in the beginning. However, at the eight month, 10 month and 12 month mark, we started getting just incredible results because of the amount of data uh, and insight that we, that we got, okay? This is uh, what I would consider an extremely minimal brief. Um, and this is basically something that if you are an agency, uh, a client um, should give you. For our campaign, we, we're gonna create a, a, fake, a fake product called the Ab Killer. And I chose that because I'm a big fan of um, infomercials. Uh, seeing that most of those guys are top-notch marketers and, and salespeople. Uh, and everything you see in an infomercial, if you want a good case study on how to sell, uh, just watch those and you will learn a lot. Um, so let's run down this real quick. So the campaign metrics, budget amount, 25,000, flight dates starting September 15th uh, through October 15th, 2016. Uh, the objective is conversions, KPI, ROI, um, secondary, there's none. And creative sizes available, basically two standard formats. Do we have first party um, data available? No, in this case. So like I said, this is a very bad brief, very basic, but at least it gives us something. Um, what you want ideally is to know, you know, uh, what first party data is available, how much, uh, the geography that you should be focusing on, uh, and, and about, you know, ten different other things that I would, uh, I would probably upload on an email 
or excuse me, on a template, Excel template, uh, and have for you guys to be able to, to download and use. Okay, but a brief, if you're working with clients, is and even if you're not working with clients, and if you're a brand, and you have to reach out to your 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 marketing team, it is something that is essential and is what's will 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 guide you on, on knowing whether your campaign um, is working or not. So this is a basically a sample strategy that I created and uh, or how it would look the hierarchy of, of, a, of a, how a strategy for a performance campaign would look. At the top we have the advertiser which is in this case we'll call Acme products. The campaign and the product for this one is the app killer like I mentioned. And then at the bottom we have three different tactics. Tactic one is a pros prospecting whitelist which we'll get into. Uh, prospect two is using contextual channels. And then um, the last one, which is retargeting, which is a pillar of all performance campaigns in programmatic. Now, if we go down the list and we look at the benefits of each, so on the left, we have prospecting. What, what is the main benefit of prospecting? Essentially, what, what the word means is finding new users. Um, we can also use prospecting to scale existing users by creating you know, lookalike segments and things like that, which we'll discuss a lot further further on later on. Uh, prospecting we can blacklist or whitelist. So, as I mentioned in the previous slide, uh, if we have a a list of sites that we want to target, that would be a whitelist. If we have a list of sites that we want to block that would be a blacklist okay and prospecting you know just gives us uh, insights because what it what it essentially it does is it goes across and we'll, we'll see this further we'll see this in the next uh, slide it goes across a bunch of different pages and so we'll see who's actually um, responding to our ads and, and who isn't now on the right hand side we have retargeting what are the benefits of this? You know, we get to reach users again, uh, which was something that was not available uh, in the not too distant past. Now, if somebody leaves your checkout page, you can, you know, you can hit them again. Um, we can convert intent into sales. You know, if they went to the checkout page, they weren't too sure. Obviously, they had intent of buying, but they didn't convert. Um, but if we retarget to them, maybe three to four times. Uh, it might convince them to go through with it. Um, and we, we've all experienced this if you've been online. Uh, retargeting increases engagement, um, basically forcing, uh, I don't want to say forcing, but encouraging the, the user to look at our ad, to go back to our page, uh, to interact with us again. And then in the last, the last uh, point here on retargeting is uh, funnel targeting, essentially there's a lot of steps to to retargeting. It could just be that they left the landing page. It could be that they left the the checkout page, or they actually converted and they're in the confirmation page. But we want to hit them again with something else, so it allows us to target the entire funnel. If we go now to our proposal sample here with our product, the App Killer, and I just grabbed this from online looked up ad machine or something like that and like I said it was uh, just uh, came to me because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of, of watching some of the infomercials and and how well they sell and, and, and do and have so many different uh, you know converting tactics uh, on TV that um, those guys are, are pretty cool pretty pretty good at, at what they do um, so okay so the strategy here would be to increase sales using advanced segmentation and contextual channels in order to reach a three to one ROI. Uh, that's a lot of fancy talk for saying that we basically want to hit the right people at the right place and we want three dollars back for every dollar invested. Okay. The tactics that we would be using are programmatic and search as the main channels you know, we'll launch contextually relevant campaigns followed by retargeting to find audiences that are interested in or have a high affinity to your product. Um, 
yeah, basically, like I like I mentioned, the the prospecting part with contextual is to find new users. Uh, search can also assist us in this, although search is also very good at converting. Uh, I'm not going to focus too much on search because this isn't a search course. Uh, if you do have questions on search, I can definitely answer them. I've had plenty of experience with it, um, but essentially, what we're going to be doing is contextually uh, contextual channels followed by retargeting. So there's two phases here, and I think I've, I've basically mentioned this already. Phase one is prospecting. Basically, uh, to stimulate high affinity traffic, prospecting plus search helps in this regard. Like I said, prospecting goes across uh, pages that are semantically uh, and contextually relevant to who we're trying to target, as we'll see. Uh, and search can do this as well because with search you can target you know um, brand brand wise or broad wise meaning uh, very broad terms so for example if you have a hotel you can target by Ritz Carlton or you can target by hotel obviously Ritz, Ritz Carlton would be higher converting and then phase two uh, which a lot of these things are would be working hand in hand and almost simultaneously uh, is you know retargeting uh, you know using retargeting to lead to conversion essentially so we bring in the users with prospecting and search once those users come to our site we retarget them get them to convert so here's the framework of what I was just uh, talking about uh, prospecting we have on one end contextual like I said channel 1 channel 2 channel 3 you see at the bottom um, those I'll discuss in the next slide but it's basically things that are, are likely to convert for our ab killer product or to you know help us find new users for our product uh, with search, you know, it would be branded and generic. Branded would be the ab killer. Generic would be, for example, you know, uh, ab machines, ab, you know, uh, equipment, things like that. On the retargeting side, basically, we're we're going to target uh, pages. You know, so the home page, anybody that visits the home page of our site is obviously at least somewhat interested in what we have to offer. So we always want to place a pixel there to target those users again. Uh, but we want to take them to the next page, which is the landing page. Any, any paid media campaign would probably lead you back to the landing page, or at least they should. Uh, because that's where we have our, you know, our good copywriting and our offer and our product and it is, um, you know, highly relevant to what our ad is actually showing, and here's where a lot of the sales are going to happen. Um, but at the same time, uh, we want to pixel, and it says all funnel pages. So that would include, for example, the checkout page. Place a pixel there in case somebody uh, decides to to buy but backs out. We can we have you know their cookie, and we can just retarget them again until we can hopefully compel them to purchase and then finally uh, the confirmation page the confirmation page can be used in two ways so the confirmation page can be uh, excluded in all following uh, media buys or all upcoming you know campaigns in order to save ad dollars why because well the user already bought um, or it can be used to upsell okay so we know that this user bought uh, the ab killer machine now we want to sell them something uh, similar relevant uh, across you know a, a related vertical uh, those are two ways uh, that the confirmation page can be used so if we dig down a little deeper uh, and I think I covered uh, half of these things already uh, so for example in contextual channel we would want to pick health and fitness diet and exercise uh, you know food beverage healthy eating uh, and then uh, on the third on the third tab there you'll see custom upload search terms what this means is that if you're using a 
DSP and you're using a third party partner for contextual targeting like Peer39, what you want to do is you want to send them, get in contact with your rep, you want to send them your search terms, okay, uh, or any keywords that you think may be relevant. What they'll do then is they'll upload it to their platform and they will uh, allow you to basically target those terms uh, on uh, across you know their how their algorithm works which is essentially finding pages that are contextually relevant okay so let's say you send them your your uploaded keywords of you know ab killer which is branded uh, and any in what what will happen is you can then it, the, your ad will show up on any of the pages where they have access to that talk about ab killer uh, on search, like I said, I'm not going to discuss, discuss search too much because this is a programmatic course, but if I had to do it uh, for this type of campaign, I'd set up a click to call since usually there's an 800 number and remember to keep it unique to the campaign so you can track back. And also, um, and then, you know, obviously the search terms, branded, generic, etc. Uh, and then finally retargeting, I mentioned this, we want to target the home page, the landing page, the checkout page, and the thank you page or confirmation page. So now for prospecting, what, what would these actual contextual channels look like? If uh, we go back and we look at the terms we were targeting, health, fitness, diet and exercise, food, beverage, healthy eating, I mean these examples I put up on there because they are probably the most um, obvious. Um, but essentially what, what will happen is uh, that your terms or, or that, or I wouldn't say terms, but that your channels that you pick uh, contextually can show up in any page or excuse me, any domain that has a page talking about them. So for example, the New York Times may not be known as a, um, you know, healthy eating type uh, exercise type site, but if they have uh, a page that has the keywords and the context that you're looking for, uh, it may be that our ad could show up on that page. And this has happened uh, on, on a lot of my campaigns where, I'll give you an example, um, you may not think that eBay would be a contributing factor to people um, booking hotel sites, but in fact, eBay, uh, in a lot of cases, shows up as a site that that uh, is uh, contributing to a lot of, of bookings for hotels. So it's it's weird in that sort of way, but uh, that's essentially how it works. And like I said, it has to do with you know con the context of the page, not exactly the domain. And this is a search page that I left on here uh, because I had already discussed the previous, uh, you know, search inclusion. Like I said, going forward, I have a lot of experience with search. If you have any campaigns, I can help you. But it's definitely not um, not for this course. Um, so take a look at this. Use it. I don't care. Uh, do whatever you want with it. Um, but this is a typical setup of a search campaign for branded and generic terms. So now retargeting. This is probably one of the more important ones since some clients uh, may decline to use uh, a prospecting budget, but may in fact be willing to invest in retargeting simply because uh, on, on the reports that you run after the fact, retargeting is usually attributed most of the uh, ROI and that's what clients will look at um, even though you should have um, some mechanism in place for you know attribution because obviously uh, you know uh, we're, we're still running for the most part on last click attribution meaning the last person that clicked uh, is the one that gets attributed with the sale or lead or whatever and we know that's not the I mean it's it's not how things work um, you know clients or excuse me users will look at a maybe they see a TV spot they search they 
uh, get hit with some banners or click some search ads. It's 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 a mess. It, depending on the product and the this or the service uh, and and the steps involved in converting and the uh, time involved in converting, it's not as easy as just attributing every conversion to last click. But unfortunately, our industry is still using that to uh, in a in a in a big way, uh, and clients uh, only understand that or a lot only understand that. But anyway, uh, so retargeting different behaviors. Homepage always if you can always if you can get the client to put a pixel on the homepage, do it uh, because, like I said, they're there for a reason. Whether it's not your exact uh, product that you're selling in this campaign or service in this campaign, um, it it's probably you know. Uh, it's, it's probably a high affinity user that might be back to convert. So always, always try and pixel the home page. Besides, it's, it's usually the page with the most visits. So it will get you a lot of pixel loads, which I'll go into in another course. Uh, but that essentially means uh, the amount of users that you have available in your pool. Okay. Um, landing page, you know, this is where our paid media goes to obviously very important um, retarget with a message you know encouraging the user to come back if they left without going on to the next the next phase phase or funnel check out you know I mean there's a lot of things you can do on a checkout especially if you have an e-commerce site or are managing e-commerce uh, clients offer them a coupon offer them something uh, to get them to come back and always important to, you know, uh, target checkout. You know, people that abandon check uh, shopping carts uh, as as quickly as possible, because um, essentially that's when what we call that's when they're hot. Uh, that's when they're they have their their wallets open and they're ready to buy, but for whatever reason they just didn't. Uh, so this is why it's it's very important to do it at this time. If you notice when you go on Amazon, for example, and you leave without buying anything, you're browsing products or whatever, you go out onto the internet and to a site that has you know access to ad inventory, uh, almost immediately you, you're gonna get hit with the exact product you were looking at with, with Amazon. They know that um, you're in, you're in that time frame, and that's why they hit you so hard usually uh, with, with that sort of thing. That's essentially what what we're trying to do on our end for our clients or our brand. Okay, and then uh, finally, there's the thank you page or the confirmation page, and this is at the point where the user you know is is finally converted. Is is he bought? She bought? They filled out a form, whatever it is that, that we wanted them to do. Uh, so here we have you know two options, like I said. We can either exclude them from future ad buys. Um, and this, ha this is on a case-by-case -case basis. It depends on uh, the product or the service that you're selling or representing. And I'll give you an example. If, if, you're, you know, if you're doing home mortgage loans, okay, uh, you might wanna exclude them uh, from all future ad campaigns, at least for a few years. Uh, not that their cookie would be valid in a few years, but uh, you might want to exclude them because that's uh, a home mortgage loan. It's not something that people do on a weekly or monthly basis. Okay, uh, a home application, maybe yes. You might want to try and you know hit them if you have other partners where you can sort of leverage that information to to amplify and scale. But if they actually convert it. I would exclude them for a long time from any future ad campaigns and save those ad dollars. Uh, but let's say they bought, uh, I don't know, an iPhone. Well, you might want to um, retarget them with an upsell for an iPhone case uh, or something like that. Because it, uh, like I said, it's at that moment they just bought, they have their wallets open, take advantage of it, don't be shy, and, and hit them, hit them at, at that time. All right, so that's it for, for this lesson. Um, this is the quiz, these are the quiz questions, okay? I'll just go over them real, real quickly, but they'll, they'll, they're on the page. 
Uh, you don't actually need a brief for campaigns, right? Just wing it. I'll have some, some options for that. Uh, prospecting is key in finding which of these. What two options can you do once a user converts? Search would be considered what sort of tactic? I see I have to edit some of these out uh, or uh, fix the grammar, but those are the questions. And thank you guys for following, listening. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I will answer them as soon as I can. Thank you again.